Hello everyone, my name is Felicia and this is day 13 of the Culinary Crusades. So a technique that's been on my list of things to learn from the joy of cooking since the beginning has been roasting a chicken, which if we look back to the coca van video I did, my parents said that I should have left the chicken in for longer. We can see that I've had some problems with cooking chicken fully in the past, and this is something I kind of wanted to fix with this go around. So I went to the store and I got a whole chicken and I found a interesting recipe from Binging with Babish, which is a food show on YouTube. And he had spatchcocked the chicken, which if you don't know what that is, it is not a dirty bird. It is an actual technique of how to cut up your chicken. Spatchcocking is basically just removing the spine so that the chicken can lay completely flat. It can cook more evenly and thoroughly, which I thought that will help me cook my chicken all the way through and we won't have any problems. To do a spatchcock technique, all you need is some kitchen shears. I say all you need, but um, we don't have any at my house, so I had to use a pair of regular scissors, which uh, don't work perfectly to cut through the bone of raw chicken, so I had to supplement with a chef's knife. So I kind of just cut up either side of the chicken. Um, the spine is directly in the middle. Cut up either side and saw it at either side with the chef's knife until I had completely cut off the spine. I put that to the side. Then you turn it over, then you lay it out flat, and then you tuck the wings behind the breast so that the tips don't get burned which is actually a lot harder than it looks, and it took me quite a while to do that. But once I got that all flattened out, uh, I wanted to do a salt brine. I threw on some fresh herbs, I threw on lots of kosher salt, and then I put that in the refrigerator for about 10 to 12 hours, because that's all the time I had. Once that was done, um, I took it out and because there was so much salt on it, I wanted to get as much of that off of there because that flavor had already penetrated into the meat and I didn't want it to be extra salty. So I brushed off as much of the salt as I possibly could and moved on to the next step, which was the herb butter that we put underneath the skin. The herbs I used were sage and thyme, but I'm pretty sure you could just use any herbs that you have on hand. Chopped up some herbs, mix that with some softened butter, and then in order to get it underneath the skin, you have to kind of put your hand underneath the skin and break up the membrane underneath there so that you could have the space to put the butter in there. And that was um, fun. It was a challenge working with raw chicken. I don't know why, but like sometimes I'm okay with it and then sometimes I'm like really disgusted by it. But, and then I, took the softened butter and I just started to spread that underneath to get it as far into the chicken underneath the skin as I absolutely possibly could. And I had some leftover, so instead of throwing it away, I just put the remainder on top of all of the rest of the chicken. Um, I had put it on a tray with a wire rack so that all the drippings could drip underneath it and not sit in its own juices. I think that helps the skin get really crispy. On the side, we just had some potatoes roasting along with it. I threw that in a 450 degree oven for about 45 minutes. Then after we tested the temperature once, I put it back in the oven for an additional eight to 10 minutes. Then after we took the temperature of the chicken and we thought it was cooked all the way through, I put it out on a cutting board and I just let it rest for 10 minutes, which I am told helps to keep in as much of the juice as it possibly can be. Because if you cut it up right when it comes out of the oven, one, it'll be very, very hot and very, very hard to handle. And two, all those juices are just gonna flood everywhere. Waited 10 minutes uh, and then we started to cut it up and I wanted to cut it into smaller pieces so that the drumsticks and the thighs and the breast and the wings could all be separated and easier for people to take it when it was served. So cut it up and we started to see that some of the pieces with the bone in were like, they were on the line of being cooked, most definitely like 
If this was a restaurant, I wouldn't have served it, but because it's just my family, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, we served it anyway. The breasts ended up being cooked perfectly. It was super moist. The skin was nice and crispy and delicious, and the thighs and the drumsticks were could have gone longer. I won't say they were undercooked, but they were they could have been a little bit more tender closer to the bone. So I don't know. Chicken, I just don't know. Maybe that's just not my protein medium and I should stay away from it, but it's proven to be difficult every single time I have tried to cook it. I will say the spatchcocking is a really great way to cook a whole chicken. Uh, it is like a little bit of extra work, but I think it makes it easier to cut up at the end. The salt brine does make the chicken skin very crispy, but it also makes it very salty. Really try to get off as much salt as possible with just like a dry paper towel, wipe off all that excess salt. But that was day 13 of the Culinary Crusades, and I will see you in a few days.